that 109 kilo category was everything we could have hoped it was going to be. It was an absolute all-star lineup. It seems to be, for some reason, in weightlifting at the moment, the 73s are amazing, the 81s are amazing, the 96s, perhaps because some of the elite have been sort of pushed out of the sport due to qualifying reasons, they sit slightly below. And then the jump back up to the 109s is extraordinary. And all of the top fellows came out to play today. One thing that would be made even more self-evident, and I'm sure some of you will have heard me talking about this problem in weightlifting, you might have even have seen Zach Tellenter's recent video on this, we're going to do some on this too, is the fact that the press out rule once again wreaked utter havoc. If it's ever going to be a problem for anyone, it's going to be those slightly more heavier built men with more upper body mass, someone like me perhaps, who has a harder time locking out rather than the people who've got the expert mobility in the lower weight categories. And we really saw that today. This category had people like Jiraiya Akbar, who I've been saying for a long time can certainly challenge for the win. Tim Ananiev from Russia, Artis Plesnex, the, the Latvian who's just been here for so long. Simon Martirosian, world champion, world record holder, took silver in Rio. Jinian Song, who's just been going from strength to strength, especially now as he's moved up a weight category. Our boy from Poland, Arkadiusz Mikalski, Wesley Kitts, the USA legend, Ali Hashemi, two-time world champ from Iran, and then the really exciting young Bulgarian lifter, Christo Christov. Today's episode is brought to you by the Weightlifting House Tokyo T-shirt. We're going to put these on at 15% discount. If you don't have one, you can still pick them up. They're not going to be around forever. We have sold an overwhelming number of these T-shirts, which is amazing to see how many people wanted one. So if you want to make sure that you get a piece of this history, head to the link below the 15% off. Our boy from the USA, from Cal Strength, one of our favorite gyms in the world, Wes Kitts, was the first to open up in the snatch. Now, I'm going to say this. I was nervous about Wes. I made this very clear. They would put in an, well, maybe not an absurd, an absurdly large 406 kilo entry total, which means that your two openers have to add up to within 20 kilos of that, which is 386, which is just 13 kilos below his best ever total of 399 kilos. The heaviest he's ever opened up at is 170, which would mean he'd have to open up at 216, which is seven kilos below a lift that probably wouldn't get given at this competition because of the press out rule being pushed so hard on this Olympic Games. But fortunately, and this, this decreased my stress, clearly training's been going well because he put in 173 kilos for his opening snatch, which he made, by the way, and he looked strong. He looked thick. He actually kind of caught it slightly wonky and then stood up with it, pulled a bit of a Martyrosian, but he made that, which meant that he would only need to open only was 213, which is still a massive opener for him. 173 on the board. Poland's Arkadiusz Mikalski then was next out. He took 175 kilos, looked very comfortable as well. And then from Latvia, Artis Plesniex came out at 175, the same weight. I believe his best ever in comp is 181, so pretty heavy opener for him and also for Arkadius. The bar then went up to 177 kilos for Iran's Ali Hashemi, the two-time world champion. No, not for his strength, but for his gutsy performances. He's a, he's a bit of a Rastami rather than a Sarah Brady. Like He just goes under things he has no business going under. He strode out calmly with that incredible self-confidence that only someone like Kinesh Rastami, his teammate, might have. He raised a prayer at the 30-second buzzer mark. And then he went under that bar and he absolutely destroyed it. That snatch was solid. Incredibly low bottom position for a man who's 109 kilos. He was on the board. The bar then stayed at 177 kilos for Wes Kitts' second attempt. He got it overhead, but this time he couldn't quite stabilize it and he lost it behind. But the bar was there. I mean, it was, it was, it was not a strength issue. It was definitely a technique issue. So he'd get one more attempt at this for a personal record in competition, internationally that is. He used the two-minute rest, and then he lifted with just 10 seconds left on the clock. He snatched it, but all three referees spotted an issue with the lockout, and they pressed red for a no lift. They said it was a press-up. The USA team handed in their challenge card. The jury reviewed it, and, well, here's the thing. In any other competition, this is a, this is a made lift. Only at this Olympic Games, where it's just been so savage, would this be called for a press-out. And fortunately for Wes and Team USA, it got overturned. All three reds were <laughs> overturned, and he got a made lift at 177 kilos. New personal record for him. Poland's Arkadiusz Mikalski then went up to 179 kilos for his second attempt, but he couldn't stick it. He went out again, but clocked it on his third attempt. 
Then Korea's Jinyan Song, another person I've been concerned about. His best total, I think, ever is 400, something around there. He's sort of a 180, 220 guy. He put his entry total in at 415, which would mean that he'd have to open at openers that would add up to 395. We're looking at a 180 and a 215, absurdly big list for him. And he came out at that 180 kilos. And again, just like Wes Kitts quelled the fear within my heart. Jin Yin Song did the same, and he made that 180 for a very nice opener. That same 180 kilos then brought out Russia's, or I should say the Russian Olympic Committee's, Timur Naniev, who's got such fantastic technique. He stumbled a little bit after recovering, but he got his feet back in line, and he got a good decision on that 180 opener. Arthur Plesniuk was the final lifter to attempt 180 kilos. For his second attempt, he hit a splendid snatch with a rock-solid lockout. Iran's Ali Hashemi then came out in his second attempt for 181 kilos and again, no business going under it, but he goes under it and he makes it and it was a fantastic lift. He made that 181. Artis Plesniak then went for 183 kilos for his third attempt and missed. He would therefore be credited with 180. Ali Hashemi again showed off his speed and freakish mobility on his final attempt at 184 kilos, which he made. He moves just so bloody well for a heavyweight lifter. And then the guy we've all been wondering about, from Bulgaria, the young Christo Christov, who had snatched 195 kilos in the training hall less than a week ago, he opened up with 185 kilos. And this was really as we start to get to the business end of the competition. This is where the people who are going to be getting the medals are really coming out. And the ease with which he hit it, especially with two attempts and remaining, really sort of singled him out as a medal contender, most likely behind Uzbekistan's Akbar Jiraev and Armenia's Simon Matarossian. Binyan Song then came out for 185 kilos also, but he couldn't get it. Tim Ananiev came out for 185, this time on his second attempt, and he did hit it, which is an enormous lift for the Russian. He was obviously hoping to open up quite a big lead over Ali Hashemi from Iran in the hope that Ali Hashemi wouldn't be able to hit a big clean and jerk and left over him to overtake him afterwards. Jin Yin Song, having made 180, missed 185, came out for his final attempt again at 185 kilos. This time he got it overhead, but the referees didn't like the lockout. His team then challenged the jury, but to no avail, it was a no lift after a slight press out on that left elbow. Tim Anania finished with the snatches with a third attempt, a very hard four, 188 kilos, which he made. That gave him a four kilo lead over two-time world champ from the 102s, Ali Hashemi. And so it was time for the big dogs to come out. Akbar Jiraev from Uzbekistan, junior world record holder, a guy I've filmed quite a few times at this point and has just been going from strength to strength. 189 kilo opener and uh, it wasn't as he'd hoped. So he gets under this bar. I'm going to reenact this awfully. The bar starts coming back somehow brings it forward, that causes a twist, Dunk walks his foot over to try and save it, comes back, drops it. It was an unbelievable fight. Um, but sadly, after all of those attempts at the bottom to stabilize it, he just eventually did have to drop the bar. Then Christo Christov took his second attempt at 189 kilos quickly and successfully, which is amazing for the young Bulgarian. And so Akbar Jiraev was back on the clock without much of a weight. This time things were so much easier for him. He still needed a moment to you know, balance things out, but he stood up very easily. The down signal from the judges then came a little bit earlier than I think we expected, but he was sensible and experienced enough just to hold on just a couple extra seconds, just so there was no doubt before he dropped the weight. A solid second attempt at 189 for Jiraev. And so finally, it was time for the biggest of the dogs, the 2019 world champion, the world record holder in the total Simon Martirosian from Armenia, the likely champion maybe to come out. He chose 190 kilos and he hit it comfortably. He really did look like he was gonna be that guy in the driving seat. Kristov then put 192 kilos on the bar for his third and final attempt, but he lost it behind him. Jiraev then went for 193, a four kilo jump from his second attempt at 189, which he made I mean, it looked like he could have gone for 197, 198 had he not missed that first attempt. But that then left Martirosian with two remaining attempts to gain a lead back and then increase it. 
He went for 195 kilos for an Olympic record on his second attempt, which he made. His record before that, remember, was 199, his world record, which was beaten by Yang Zhu from China at 200 at the Asian Championships a few months ago. He's not here because he wasn't going to win. China didn't send him. So Martirossi had made that 195. He then took a 3 kilo jump up to 198 kilos for his third attempt, but this was just a little bit beyond him. He couldn't stabilize it at the bottom, and so he would only take a 2 kilo lead over Akbar Jarayev into the cleaner jerks. Also, very quickly, on uh, Simon's second attempt at 195, the bar was wonky, as it often is with him, and as he stood up, he did a little two-step, like feet crossed way over, and he came, it was absolutely amazing, one of the best saves I've ever seen. Over now to the clean and jerks. Despite having finished third on the snatches, it was actually Bulgaris Christo Christov who came out to put a total down with his opening clean and jerk of 213 kilos. He's not the strongest lifter, despite the fact that he can snatch 195 in training, but he still made that lift very nicely. Wes Kitts was next out. Also, obviously, he had to come out 213 kilos because of his 406 kilo entry total. He got it overhead, but the referees all gave him a down signal before he even got his feet level because they saw a press out. The USA watched that replay. They tried a challenge card, but honestly, it, it wasn't. It was too much of a press out. Uh, the jury turned it down, and at the very least, that review just bought Wes a little bit of time to get some rest in. So he then came out for a second attempt at 213 kilos. This time, there was absolutely no doubt. There was no referee in the world who would have given that lift a red light. He got three whites on that 213, which would give him a 390 kilo total with one attempt remaining. His best ever total, 399. Poland's Arkadiusz Mikalski then came out with 216 kilos and got it despite losing balance a little bit in the jerk. Christo Christov then took his second attempt at 219 kilos to extend his total into the lead to 408 kilos, which was at this point in his career his best ever. Jin Yun Song, another person who I was so stressed about because that 415 kilo entry total meant a 395 opener. He hit 180, that would mean 215, which is like within a handful of kilos of his best ever clean and jerk. And he didn't even come out the 215, he came out the 220. Uh, and the clean <laughs> looked so hard, but the jerk was easy work, easy money. He made that lift, securing a 400 kilo total with two attempts remaining. Artis Plesniak from Latvia then matched him with his own opener, having snatched, was it 181? What did Plesniak snatch? Yeah, 180 kilos he snatched because he missed 184, didn't he? Wes Kitts from the USA then for his final attempt came out at 220 kilos. Now, now this is the weight that I have seen him in part. I've been meters from him and watched him make 220. It's so impressive to be there and see someone move weights this strongly. Something I'd noticed about this competition, which made me think that maybe Wes was carrying a bit of a wrist injury. I know he's had a wrist injury in the past, uh, and I think maybe he's still dealing with it because normally when he stands up a clean, he pops out a little bit, which just means that a little bit less distance to go overhead, but mainly for someone who's so muscle bound, it's just easier to be here than it is to be here and maintain a lockout. I think that's one of the reasons he was wobbly in that opening attempt. So I think he was in a bit of pain, but anyway, he came out for this 220 kilo lift and he actually ended up clocking it, which I didn't expect. I don't know if it had gotten into his head. I don't know if he pulled it differently or what it was, but... It's a real shame, but he would end up with a 390 kilo total, which is not bad at all for the Cal Strength lifter. So now at this point, we come to the likely contenders for the bronze medal. Timur Naniev from the Russian Olympic Committee had a four kilo lead over Ali Hashemi, but opened first on the clean and jerks with 121 kilos. The clean was good, but and the thing with Naniev is because he's got such a phenomenal lockout and when he's locked, he's locked. If anything deviates from that, it's slightly sus. And so he actually caught the bar where everyone else would catch it, but then it slowly extended into that hyperextended position, which meant that he ended up getting red lights. The ROC, the Russian Olympic Committee, would challenge that judging, but the jury upheld the referee's decision. So with less than two minutes on the clock, he had to follow himself again at 221 kilos. This time... I mean, this this was the fight of the competition for me. This was the most impressive lift. With barely any time, he gets un he pulls under this weight that looks heavy. He catches a bounce and comes up, gets to that sticking point where it's like, you know, it's not like you just have been pushing in the wrong direction and you need to go back down. You're actually too weak. And he comes back down, bounces again, and somehow fights through it. 
can barely breathe, dips, drives, gets this bar overhead with just the lockout of the guards, splits so far, front foot is so far ahead of front knee, it's absurd. Back knee at this point drops to about an inch off the floor. He holds it, staggers around, somehow maintains that lock, brings his hips back under, and um, I mean, it gets the lift. Just the fight of the the fight of the Olympics for Tim Anani over there. Christo Christov then came out for 222 kilos for his final attempt. He got it overhead, celebrated hard, and and got a two to one decision in his favor. I think it was a good lift. Also, I've just realized that these leaves make it look like I have horns. That's not so good. So the jury ended up wanting to take another look. Let's move that. It's a little bit off-putting, isn't it? The jury wanted to take another look at the lockout, though, and they overturned it. I thought this was really harsh. The Bulgarian team challenged that, hoping that the jury would change their mind. But unsurprisingly, the jury gave the same decision again, and Kristoff was left to... He had a bit of a rage in the back room. So let's just take a look. He hit 189 on his snatch. Then he did 219, so that's a 408 kilo total. If he'd have, if they'd have given this lift, which I th actually think they should have given it, that's another three kilos, 411 kilos. That's potentially a medal if they give that to him. No wonder he was raging. Arkadius Mikowski then declined his second and third attempts. Perhaps that stumble on his opener caused an injury of some kind, which was a real shame for the Polish lifter. Tim Ananiev having just four and he was just dead at this point after that 221 second attempt he had one more chance to build his lead over Hashemi and he chose 224 kilos as the weight to do it with this time there was no need for the referees or jury to make a decision because he couldn't actually stand up the clean so that would end his total at let's just check this again sorry I should know these these numbers I'm not at work so I'm um I don't have the same resources I normally do so he did 188 on his snatch, and then he cleaned and jerked 221, 409. That's a kilo over Christo Christov, and that puts him into the lead at this point, but with two other lifters who we know can still beat him. So um, that was a really good thing that he, he hit that 221. That, that put him into the bronze medal over Christov. Jinian Song for a second attempt then came out for 225 kilos. This wouldn't put him into... Well, this would put him into a medal position, but with two lifters who were going to, you know, outlift him still to come out. He got it overhead. Great fight on the clean. It was very tough to stand up with, but he lost it forwards, sending the bar careering off the platform. Uh, along with the loaders, he ended up having to chase it down and stopping it because the momentum on that bar was uh, intense and scary for the officials. And eventually they managed to get it back on the platform. Artis Plesnex from Latvia then came out with 225 kilos and made it look routine. That lift itself wouldn't challenge for a medal, but he did seem happy because that was, well, you know, that was actually a personal record, I believe, in competition for him. Ali Hashemi now came out for 226 kilos, which would give him that 410 kilo total and put him into the lead before the big dogs came out and took gold and silver, most likely. So he, he needed this for bronze. He needed a couple of bounces as usual to get up with a clean, but after he got up with it and a, quite a long time standing there before the jerk, he attempted but was honestly not anywhere near it. At that point, you're sort of looking at it and just thinking, there's no way you can make this. It's not technique. You're just, you're not strong enough and you're going to have to take these back to back. This is brutal. So we came straight back out for a second attempt. Again, somehow got the clean, but missed the jerk. It wasn't close. And to be honest, I think even if he made the jerk, it would have been questionable whether the referees would have given it to him because he pulled a bit of a Tian Tao, did a little pre-jerk dip to get a bit of whip on the bar, which... You're allowed to have oscillation on the bar as long as the body underneath is stationary before you attempt the jerk. That's how, you know, Ilya or Andre Romanow get away with things. But you can't do a pre-jerk dip. Tiantai gets away with it, but, you know, he's retired now. So. so having missed that second attempt, he then moved up to 230 to buy some time. But at this point, he you know, he did look likely to bomb. Uh, and that would end up probably handing that bronze medal to Naniev. Of course, like I said, with Jurai Akbar and Simon Martyrosin to still open, they would likely get gold and silver. And so it was Jurai Akbar, the young Uzbek lifter who opened with 227 kilos, that's 500 pounds. Bear in mind the world record is 141 by his teammate Rosalind Rudinov, the 2016 Olympic champion, who's not here because he got popped. And Jurai came out and he made that opener at 227 kilos for a new Olympic record at 420 kilos. Unfortunately for him, he wouldn't hold that record for long because Armenia's strongest 
Free Kiss 109. Simon Martyrosum came out for 228 kilos, a kilo above. That would move him three kilos above in the total. He came out and hit a new total Olympic record for the lead of 228 with 423 kilos. Ali Hashemi then decided, smartly, that 228 kilos would be his final attempt rather than going for the 230. The clean was really tough, uh, and he had to drop the bar before attempting the jerk. He became too dizzy, dropping to one knee on the stage, and uh, he bombed out. He wasn't able to get that bronze. So at this point, we have Simon Watarossi in gold, Akbar Jarayev silver, they're untouchable. In bronze medal was Tim Ananiev. We had two lifters who could try and beat him, one of whom was Jinyan Song, the other of whom was Artis Plesniak from Latvia. The first to try was Jinyan Song at 230 kilos, a huge personal record for him. He got under the bar, he somehow got up with the bar, and it really was an amazing fight for that clean. And then he suffered the same fate as Ali Hashemi. He, despite making that clean, got incredibly dizzy, dropped the bar, fell backwards. Uh, you know, the, the, the doctor on, on hand had to run up and just make sure he's okay. Obviously he was, it's just weight on the carotid artery, loss of oxygen in the brain, and he just sort of passed out, that's how it is. Which meant that he wouldn't get that bronze medal despite a huge personal record in the clean, but a great fight. The next person, the final person who could dethrone Timur Naniev was Artis Plesniak from Latvia. He came out for 230 kilos, a huge personal record for him. He managed to keep his composure, he made the clean, and he made the jerk to go one kilos ahead of Timur Naniev and secure the bronze medal. Which was amazing, you know, Artis Plesniak over the years has been the kind of person who doesn't show any emotion, and for that reason he doesn't have an enormous following. But the guy is a trooper, and that, I mean, I was so happy to see him hit that 230 and get that bronze. So with the bronze medal decided, it was now time to see who would take the gold. Jarayev Akbar opted for 234 kilos. That would move him back into the lead. He pulled the bar, got under it, and got up with it. But for some reason, despite being such a powerful jerker, he couldn't lock out the jerk, and he lost it. The Armenians then sneakily attempted to minute drive Akbar, but they failed to wait for the clock to start before they put their change in. I don't know how, I don't know how this happens to professional coaches that they make these mistakes, but they do. In any case, Jarayev opted to actually go up to really switch the heat on a little bit for Simon Martyrosian, sensing that probably 234 wouldn't be enough because. Simon could just didn't do 235. So he went up for 237 kilos. This would be an Olympic clean and jerk record and a new total record. He absolutely, well, he didn't nail the clean. He got under the clean, didn't catch a bounce, but still rocked it up. He's got quads of peace. And then he just destroyed the jerk, setting a new personal record in the total at 430 kilos. Is that true? Sorry, I'm actually getting some cold feet. I have a feeling that that's not... I think that's a kilo under his personal record total. Let me just double check that. No, that is. That's a two kilo personal record in the total. Two kilos of what he hit, Asian champs. And so that Olympic record, clean and jerk, and total would give him an absurd 430 kilo total, putting him way into the lead now, though with Simon Martyrosian still with two attempts remaining. Martyrosian had these two attempts. He came out for 238 kilos and he absolutely destroyed the clean. It looked like nothing. He turned the pistons on, stood it up, put the bar overhead, but the lockout was not secure and he dropped the bar. He fell sideways and lost the lift. Fortunately, it wasn't down to the judges to decide. It was just a lift. He couldn't hold it overhead. So one attempt remained. Five years ago, he came second in Rio to an Uzbek. Would history repeat itself? Simon Martyrosian stepped up to the bar with all of the pressure on him. The clean was not the easiest clean we've ever seen, but he got under it, he stood it up. He then took a deep breath, he dipped, he drove, he split incredibly wide. He got under it and he didn't recover with it. He dropped the bar down. Simon Martyrosian was not to be the Olympic champion. The Olympic gold went round the neck of Jurayev Akbar, the young lifter from Uzbekistan. It was an historic session. I honestly feel gutted for Simon. You know, I a lot of people love the underdog winning. I get it. I actually quite like seeing the person who's supposed to win win because I feel so bad for them when they don't. I'm overwhelmed with happiness for Jirai Vakpar. I've been singing him praises for so long, but I didn't think this was his time. I thought this time, you know what? Simon deserves this. And 
Simon didn't get it. And you know what? Jiraiya deserved it. And so that was a 109s. Guys, it's 15% off the Weightlifting House Tokyo t-shirt. The graphics on this, absolutely sickening. Put a link to that down below. It really, really helps support the channel and just the growth of Weightlifting House as a company as we work hard to, to grow this business to provide even more media and equipment and footage, articles, books for the community of Weightlifting. Appreciate you all tuning in. I'll catch you all tomorrow for Super Heavyweight slash Talakadze. What's he gonna do?